Hi, I'm Jake, and today I'll be recreating the legendary Chris Smelling Runout. Wow, look at oh, that. Give that man a round of applause. Mm -hmm. Now that's two shots for the ages. After calling and making one of the most creative shots I've ever seen, was Chris rewarded? Well, the pool gods are a cruel bunch, and instead he was left with this. Five balls on the table, and he couldn't see a single one. My mind instantly goes to the two ball because it's so close to the corner pocket, but after a quick look at the one rail kick, you can see that the 12 ball is blocking it. Looking at the layout of the table, there are three offensive options that Chris Melling has from this position. The seven ball and six ball are sitting in decent positions to be made if you can manage to kick one rail at them and get a decent hit. The six ball is closer to the pocket and at first glance might seem like the easier option, but the angle which you would be approaching it from requires a surprisingly thin cut, which in my opinion makes it a much harder shot. The next option is a seven and you can actually see Chris Melling eyeing it up, but the seven presents a problem because the natural angle of approach is slightly blocked by the 11 ball. This means that Chris Melling would have to hit higher up on the rail and then try to kill the angle with right English. These types of shots are difficult to control and the probability that it would go in would be rather low even for a player of Chris's caliber. Rather, Melling decides to take on the Mass A and shoot the two ball. Honestly, I wasn't really sure why he decided to go for the Mass A until I found this interview. When I do exhibitions all around the country, around the world, I'm pretty good at swerve shots. So obviously on that table it's brand new, the cost's brand new, the ball's brand new, etc. So it's a bit more difficult and I just thought, well, give me a chance. I, I know I'm going to get near it. I step up to the table for my first attempt. I manage to get around the 13, but the cue ball curves back too quickly and I run into the 10 and 12. My second and third attempts are basically just repeats of attempt number one, with the cue ball getting around the 13, but curving back in too early. On my fourth and fifth tries, I try to take a little action off the cue ball to stop it from curving back in so quickly. I get rid of some of the bottom and move it more towards straight left, but I take off too much and I end up sending the cue ball straight into the rail. After running straight into the 13 on my sixth attempt, I try to find the happy medium between the two shots. When I hit the ball with mostly bottom and left, it curves in too early and it hits the 1, 10, or 12. Hit with more left and not enough bottom and I end up just sending the cue ball straight into the rail. So if I shoot somewhere in between there, I should be able to hit the 2, right? On attempt 8, I adjust slightly and I get closer than I have on any of my other attempts. Over my next 5 attempts, I continue to dial the shot in and just try to recreate what I did on attempt 8. On attempt 13, this happens. I manage to hit the 2 ball, but something just doesn't feel right. I'm just not getting the same kind of bending action that Chris Melling had. Jump forward to attempt 16 and I decide to check the footage again. I notice that where I have the 13 is too far out from the rail, like 3 quarters of a diamond too far out. I move the 13 a bit closer to the rail which is much closer to the actual shot that Chris Melling made. I start to realize that I'm focused on getting around the wrong ball. The entire time that I've been shooting this shot, I've been almost solely focused on getting around the 13. However you look at Chris Melling's shoot again, and you can see that he's almost shooting around the 13, and the mass A is for the purpose of just getting around the 10 and 12 ball. Over my next attempts, I start to focus less on getting around the 13 and more on getting around the 10 and 12. On attempt 20, I'm able to get the cue ball past the 12 and curve it back and make contact with the 2 ball. It isn't as pretty as Chris Melling's, but I almost make it, and if I had a little bit more English on the ball to straighten it out, it would have gone in. I wish I could say that I had some kind of epiphany that allowed me to at least get close to making this shot every time, but that just isn't the case. I just kept hitting the shot trying to recreate what I did on attempt 20, and I finally made it on my 37th attempt. I managed to get the cue ball far enough that it won't hit the 12, and it bends back in and heads straight towards the 2 ball. I didn't get position on the 5 like Chris Melling did, but I'm no Chris Melling. A part of me wanted to keep shooting until I got position, but I felt uncomfortable shooting any more mass A's on the table that isn't my own. In my opinion, this is the hardest shot of the three shots that Chris Melling made. The variables in this shot are much harder for me to control consistently. I'm angled up at 80 degrees. I have to try and predict the amount of deflection that is going to occur. I then have to try and not only get the cue ball to bend back to a path where it will contact and make the two, but the path needs to be one that does not contact the 12 ball. I honestly thought that this would be easy compared to the first shot, but I was very wrong. My inexperience with shooting mass A's became painfully obvious rather quickly, and in the end, I have to say I gained a new respect for this shot and the entire run that Chris Melling was able to string together. And to quote Chris Melling, Come on, I mean, how many times do you think you try that a hundred times, how many times you make that shot? Uh, probably about 99. Hey guys, this is the end of the video. Hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.